Hello everyone, Loremaster of SoTech here, uh, and as you can see, I'm in the pre-order beta for Vermintide 2. So what I wanted to do um, for today about Vermintide 2, I intend on streaming it and a bunch of other stuff, but I imagine there's, oof, that's a little loud, there's a, quite a few of you that are maybe getting into Vermintide for the first time, because Vermintide 1 was kind of more of a cult classic, whereas Vermintide 2 definitely feels like it's going to be a very big popular game. So what I wanted to do for you guys is I wanted to make a basic survival guide for any new players coming into Vermintide. So if you're coming from the first game to the second, some of this information may be useful, but if you're an experienced player you probably don't need to watch this. Um, this is more for newbies. Um, so let's go ahead and sort of work our way through. So uh, this is the uh, central hub. And I just want to kind of walk you through a couple things about the game. So the first is that there are five characters. Um, you've got Kruber, who's your... you got the Empire Soldier, a Dwarf, a Wood Elf, uh, Bright... Or, sorry, this is the uh, Witch Hunter, and then the uh, Bright Wizard. Now, every class has three careers. Um, currently, you start off with two of them locked, and you unlock the second one at level 7, and the final one at level 12. Um, so, the thing you need to know about each career is that each one of them comes with a passive ability, and then an active ability. So, for instance, if you play the Dwarf Ranger, you get, uh, whenever a special unit dies, which we'll talk about in a minute, they drop ammo pickups... He has twice as much ammo, he has a faster reload speed, and then for his active ability, he drops a smoke bomb. Whereas, like, if we go to the Slayer, uh, the Slayer, his passive, is that he gets stacking damage buff um, when he hits an enemy, and he gets increased attack speed. So the more he attacks, the faster and stronger he gets. And then his active is Leap, where he literally just, like, flies through the air, and if he runs into someone, he... Uh, stuns them um, and it also increases his attack speed whereas if you're going to go to say salt spire passive ability is whenever you tag an enemy they take additional damage which we'll talk about tagging in a moment uh, he does not suffer block cost from light attacks from frontal assaults uh, he, if he critic if he crits uh, a headshot which is very easy to do with headshots he'll instantly slay man-sized enemies and then he has, like, his active. So, like, it's good to review those and find the one that fits your playstyle best, which, of course, you'll come to know. Alright, so let's talk about just a couple of little things. Not as only is the Red Moon perhaps safe, and I'm just gonna kind of read over what he's saying. Okay, so... I'm just gonna turn down a little bit so let's go over kind of like some of the basics of Vermintide so every character has a melee weapon and a ranged weapon with the exception of the Slayer who has two melee weapons and the thing you need to know are just and I'm gonna be going over the keys for keyboard and mouse um, if you play with a controller it's heresy and you're wrong <laughs> I can't help you um, so here's the basics that you need to know um, there is like a little dot in the center which helps you aim um, and this dictates, this is important for melee and range, because like if you're swinging at an enemy, you do want to try and go for headshots, because you'll do more damage. Uh, most uh, weapons have a, basically a trio of swings, kind of like in, uh, if you ever played like Legend of Zelda, where you get your first swing, second swing, third swing, when you do light attacks. And then every weapon also has an attack where if you hold down the left mouse click button, you get like a charged attack. Now, depending on the weapon, the charge attack will have different effects. For instance, on this weapon, you notice that this is more for single target damage. Whereas my uh, over basically overcast melee attack uh, does AoE damage and will knock people back. Um, if you hold down right click, you'll put up a block, which the three shields indicate stamina, and they are their full shields and half shields. Which you'll see, this will regenerate up to a half shield and then a full shield. Yep, just like that. Um, whenever an enemy hits you, it'll usually decrease uh, by a half shield. But depending on how powerful the enemy is, it might go up or down by more or less. Um, if you're holding down right click to block and you hit left click, 
you'll do a push, and the push is a super important mechanic of the game that I'll demonstrate here in a little bit. Um, because it's used to shove enemies back and give you some breathing room, which is super crucial to have. Uh, ranged weapons uh, work pretty stereotypically. Left click is to fire, right click is to aim, though some characters have like, uh, some weapons have different abilities. For instance, the uh, Bright Wizard, for most of her, uh, pretty much all of her stabs, uh, the left click does a, one spell and the right click does a different spell. So you'll just kind of have to test with each of the different weapons, figure out what works best for you. Um, when you're aiming, um, it, it kind of slowly will come down to um, the maximum target. Uh, some weapons get more accurate when you crouch. As if you if you kind of look very closely, you can see that it gets slightly more accurate when I crouch. Um, some weapons get less accurate when you crouch, so you kind of just have to experiment a bit with that. Uh, as for crouching, it'll let you move beneath things, and it also counts as a sneak mode, which not a lot of people know in that the, you can actually use the crouch to sneak by enemies or hide, um, which is really effective when you're trying to avoid patrols. Other than that, um, we'll pick up various items that'll fill up hotkeys. You can press 1 and 2 to switch between your range of melee weapon, or I prefer to use the Q button, um, or you can roll your mouse wheel as well. Now, uh, there are some other items that you can pick up. I have a bad feeling. Okay, good. She's not going to talk to me unless I talk to her. There are some other items that you can pick up. For instance, uh, you have the po you have potions, which take up your number four slot. And these have different effects. Potion of strength increases your damage by a buttload. Potion of speed increases how fast you move and how fast you can attack. And potion of concentration fills up that purple bar that you uh, see at the bottom of my screen. Uh, just above my health bar. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the next thing I want to go ahead and look at is, uh, hold on, let me find, they've changed the layout a tiny bit. I think it's, nope, it's not down there. What the heck, how do I get to the, uh, oh, that's interesting. So it looks like I need to level up to actually unlock some areas, because a lot of these cave were not here previously. Um... So this is this is different. I wonder if these will go away as I level up. Wow, that's actually really interesting. Okay, so I guess I have to do a level to unlock that stuff. That's fine. Um, so with that, I think we're actually ready to go ahead and hop into a match. Uh, the only other thing I want to show you uh, before we hop into a match is... You, so that purple bar, that is your special active ability. So like for Barton, we talked about the active is that he throws down a smoke bomb. So, so to activate it, you press the F key. So I press F... Throw down a smoke bomb, turns everything gray to symbolize that I'm stealth, and I will remain stealth until I attack and hit an enemy. Or, like, if I run into someone or something. Let's see, then it fades. And then if I were to drink this, you'll notice the purple bar level, uh, heals up much faster. That being said, let's go ahead and hop into our first match. Um, let's see, quick play. I have to start with recruit. And uh, quick play, essentially, yeah, this is a random mission, but you get a bonus reward, and it's the quickest way to get into a game. Uh, you can do custom game, which will allow you to pick a particular mission. Um, there are multiple forms of difficulty, uh, heroic deeds, uh, you can kind of read about all this stuff, they haven't done that yet. Lobby browser is where you can look for your friends, or maybe someone doing a particular map, or what have you. And you can, of course, custom tailor the filters. So with that said, let's go ahead and hop into our first quick play, and hopefully the people that are in it are not too noisy. When you select a mission, you have to come down here to this, uh, oh, looks like, so when you, uh, look for a mission like I just did, sometimes it'll just find you a party that's also looking to start a mission, and it'll just move you into their lobby, which is just fine. So we're going to the keep, which is of course the, uh, base home, and I'm only going to play a single map just to kind of demonstrate to you guys some aspects about the game. And you may hear some talking uh, from other players chatting. Uh, just just ignore that. So we're going to go ahead and hop into this. This waystone area, which is going to indicate that we're all ready to start. Of course, we're waiting on the wood elf. Uh, other than that, stuff's pretty straightforward. You have enter to talk. Um, i trying to remember any other important hotkeys. E will let you interact with a couple things. R lets you reload if you have a weapon that has multiple shots 
per um, per load or cartridge, I guess. So, for instance, right now the crossbow, you see how it says one out of twenty nine in the bottom right. The one means that I can only have one shot per uh, one shot per um, load, essentially. So, if I fire, I go down to zero, and then it reloads back up to one. There are some weapons that'll have like eight shots, so you can like go down to four and then like do it. Uh, other than that, tab key. We'll show you some interesting things. You can see my passive and my career skill up at the top. You can also see information about the other players, um, including, and it, it gives you the ability, if you activate the rice marker, to mute them, to talk to them, to show their profile, and of course to kick them, I believe, if you're the host. Alright, so we're going into our first map, which is great. And I'll... Uh, Explain the fields around Usingen. The I basics of the game as best I can. To the poor bastards in their path. You're heading to Morgan's Loft, biggest farm in the area. If there are survivors, and I hope there are, you'll find them held captive there. Do what you can. So this map is actually uh, not the One easiest map, but it's a fun starting point. So uh, there's plenty of dialogue with the characters, and this game is actually very important for audio. Uh, you notice for the three key I do have a potion which is used to heal and we'll kind of talk about healing as it becomes relevant. When you look around the map you will want to look for white glowing objects as you kind of explore which will be things that you Yo. can pick up. Can you guys hear me? So I'm finding a savage right now and I'm actually going to go ahead and mute everyone just because I'm making a video. So here's a bomb so I'm going to pick that up with the E button. And uh, we'll kind of talk about the different enemy tribes as we see them. So this is a savage. Savages are marauders that wield two-handed weapons. And essentially their whole deal is that they can attack a bunch of times at once. And they'll just basically have a chain of attacks. Like, see how he's just kind of flailing? All of those will be attacks, but thankfully he got stuck. So you'll notice as I'm fighting that um, essentially my goal is to try and keep enemies away from me. Block when I see an attack coming and then retaliate. A really good way to play this game is to basically wait for the enemy to attack, block it, and then swing as they're stuck. If you can, it's good to get a preemptive strike. Um, and you'll kind of learn to play with your different weapons. So you can see our Bright Wizard's already gone down. Uh, when you run out of health, you'll fall over like that, and an a ally player will have to come up to you and hold down the E button to revive you, essentially. Oh, there's so many of these savages. Uh, the, that's a great weapon, Marauder. He's kind of considered... He's not really a special, but he's kind of close to being one, because he's kind of nasty. Um, characters that are more dangerous or special when killed will show up at the top right corner. Um, and it'll show, like, who got the killing blow on them, which can be pretty important. Uh, let's see. We'll use our crossbow here and see if we can... The ranger, um, because he's able to replenish ammo by killing specials, and he has twice as much ammo, he's pretty well designed for taking out people from range. Okay, here's our first special. So that is a warp fire thrower. And if you're wondering how I did that, if you hit the T button, uh, upon seeing a special, like that great weapon wielding dude, the game will mark them and make that stink noise. It kind of sounds like steel. Alright, so that's a Vortex spell being cast by a Chaos Sorcerer, who's around here somewhere. So I'm going to kind of essentially look around and hit the T button a number of times and try and locate uh, the Chaos Sorcerer so I can kill him. And you'll notice I'm using my AoE attack to basically just stun and do damage to a lot of the basic enemies. And like, here's a Savage. We're going to shoot him to stun him, essentially. And try and kill him at range. Um, another thing that's important is that you might notice me doing is dodging. And the way dodging works is whenever you want, as you're moving, uh, all you have to do is, like, be holding down the... Uh, be holding down like the forward button well that's to jump his space is to jump but if you hold down like the sideways button and you hit space you'll do like a little dash or backwards you do a little dash uh it's essentially just holding a movement direction that isn't forward and hitting space okay so i'm trying to listen ah there he is so there's the chaos sorcerer and he's dead finally 
So he was the one summoning those, uh... Green. Definitely green. Here's a healing drop. Healing for that, Azumki. Don't you have a pain threshold? What I have are two arms. Uh, for the I vortexes, when you see them, which are those big clouds of, like, green fire, just run away. Um, they are kind of almost sentient, and they'll follow you, which makes them particularly dangerous. Um, but as to audio cues, so I'm going to turn up my volume a little bit. And one thing you'll notice is that you can hear... Troops uh, make sounds. So you'll notice. Oh no! So this. Okay. So this is the other type of chaos sorcerer, and his deal is that he is able to grab you with like a long-range green web. Essentially, is what it is. And up oh, there he is again. So you'll notice he's just basically sucking the life out of me and holding me there. And it's super annoying because you can't do anything. My, my party has to save me. Uh, but he just died, so that's good. Um, and it's important to listen for audio cues, like I said. When a sorcerer is about to appear, they'll kind of do like this speech where they'll basically be rambling and you'll be able to just hear them. Um, and it's good to essentially try and find them at that moment before you get swarmed. Because the last thing you want is to run into a special, like a Chaos Sorcerer, while you're fighting hordes of troops. Because that's when this game gets dangerous. Is you'll, you'll be fighting a special and an army of just random garbage. Like this one fire thrower. I'm just going to fight from behind here using my AoE attack to stagger and knock down enemies while also doing pretty good AoE damage. Now that won't work against all enemies. We will eventually run into enemies that I cannot stagger. For instance, if you go up against a Savage, which are the Norskins with twin axes, or one of the Great Weapon guys, or God forbid, a Chaos Warrior. Oh, okay, there's the Assassin. They're pretty nasty. Um... So basically, you'll hear them laughing and cackling. Uh, speaking of a Chaos Warrior, these guys are super tough. And the best way to fight them is to just uh, get their aggro on you and just block uh, whenever they swing. Okay, so when he says watch the shadows like that, that means that there's likely an assassin coming. Okay, so there's some healing in here, so I'm going to go ahead and heal. Uh, you don't want to heal until you go down, um, just because uh, it, you don't want to waste healing unless you're like all the way dead. All right, so those guys are fighting. Um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and grab a tome, and I'll show you guys what that is. Oh boy. So see, I'm a little isolated here from my party, which is kind of a big no-no. I shouldn't be doing this, but. I feel pretty confident in my skill as a player to handle it. But I am playing it dangerous because I heard the player characters, or the actual, like, characters, mention that there's a Chaos Sorcerer nearby. And when they say that, that literally means that there's one somewhere nearby. Okay, you hear him talking? Let's see, there he is. And whenever you hear that, like, shh, shh, sound, that's them teleporting around. That's, like, your best sign that they're... Okay, see? So there's another one now who's summoning tornadoes, which is just Alright, All right, so I got the tome I wanted. I'm actually going to heal up before I grab that. Alright, so I got a tome. And you'll see, it takes up my healing slot. Um... But it'll give me a reward. It'll give me bonus experience and a bonus to rolling an item set at the end, which is pretty powerful. Alright, so see there are sound effects going on behind this, which means something's up. So it's good to kind of keep your ears out. Uh, there is a sound effect I'll try and demonstrate, though it's kind of hard to demonstrate, which is if an enemy sneaks up behind you, there will be kind of a metallic ringing sound um, before they're about to hit you, that if you turn around and raise your block, 
you actually will be able to block it in time. Uh, speaking of blocking, you do want to try and block the direction the attack is coming from. If someone runs up behind you and hits you, unless you're wielding certain kinds of weapons or have like a bonus ability going, it's not going to help. Like, you're still going to get shanked. And on the higher difficulties, you will take a bunch of damage from unnecessary hits. Learning to block is easily the most important... Block and dodge, I should say. Is easily the most important aspect of the game that most players um, struggle to master. You know, they play through the lowest difficulty and they think, Oh, okay, I can just kind of like flood my way through. Alright, so there's an assassin. And there's a warfire thrower. Very nasty. Uh, whenever you fight these guys, they have armor, as you can see, over most of their bodies, so aim for their heads. Alright, so we're gonna go get get tossed in here. And you'll notice, I, I basically have a strategy of swing a couple times, put up a block, and push. Uh, these enemies are very, Skaven Slaves, which are these naked Skaven, are very light, and you can easily shove them around with a push. So I'm essentially just fighting, trying to fight carefully by keeping my blocks up uh, when necessary. Uh, you'll notice our Karelian, she's probably not blocking, or not our Karelian, our Bright Wizard who keeps falling down. She's probably not blocking, she's probably just swinging like this. She's probably literally just doing this the entire time that she's fighting a horde. Just click, 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 click. And you can't do that in this game. You're going to get absolutely... You're just going to get slumped because there's just too many enemies to do that. You have to fight tactically. You know, this isn't like a MMO where you can just spam the attack button and it's all going to work out. So I'm just going to knock these guys down. Uh, depending on the difficulty, enemies will be able to take a certain amount of hits. Um, that's just something you'll want to practice. Like, I know if I single attack and I hit him in the head like that, he'll die instantly, which is great. So I know a single overhead will kill... Okay, so here's a patrol. I talked about these earlier. Um, you do typically want to try and avoid them. Because they have... Well, that was... Still in beta. <laughs> the game has a few little small problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fight from range. Because that's... Okay, so you hear that kind of wheezing sound? That's the sound of a Mulder Packmaster being nearby. And that's a Packmaster. So he has a hook, and what he'll try and do is he'll try and grab you. But now he's dead. Uh, he'll basically try and hook you, and if he hooks you, you won't be able to do anything while you're hooked. He'll just drag you around, uh, usually through waves of enemies. And you'll just take a bunch of damage, and it sucks. And you can't help yourself. So you notice, my party is pretty much falling apart. Storm Vermin hit really hard, which are those uh, guys with the big halberds and heavy armor. And they pretty much wiped out my party. And here's another strategy that I've actually found is pretty good for Vermintide. When you attack an enemy, move forward to attack, and then retreat backwards a little bit. So like, attack, pull back. Attack, pull back. Attack, pull back. Um, when you're fighting enemies to one side. Obviously, if you're surrounded, that won't work. So we got another warp fire thrower there. We took care of him, which is good. And we're just going to sort of clear our way through here. So the party is definitely struggling, but I'm pre I feel okay about carrying them through the rest of the match. At least on this difficulty. If we were playing on a harder difficulty, there's no way I could do it. Um, especially, like, the harder difficulties on this game whoop, get a lot harder. Alright, so we're going to climb up this ladder here. And I think I see a savage. Yep, so I'm going to see if I can headshot him. I wasn't able to headshot him. I got him that time. So we're just going to aim for the important ones. And try and take them down. Nice right, armored on his head. Okay, so you know, so Barton just said something about a gas racky and lungs. So I know that means there's a globe of deer nearby. And see those poison wind globes coming over the fence? So there's a poison wind globe in here back there somewhere, but I can't hit him from here. I have to wait till he climbs over. There he is. So I'm going to shoot him in the face. 
Shot him once, so he's gonna try and suicide. And you shoot him again and he dies. Uh, their suicide attack, they literally just run at you until they explode. Uh, here's a Skaven Gunner. Very dangerous. As you can see, he shoots a lot of bullets, but I got an easy headshot on him. So, Alright, here comes a Horde. And you'll notice that my attack wasn't able to just AoE through these guys. Because it's getting caught on some of these heavier Marauders. Like if they have shields. Also, the only way to know... Uh, never assume an enemy is dead just because they fall over. The only time you know for sure if they're dead is if they get ragdoll mechanics... And if they drop all their weapons. If they drop all their weapons and they just flop around like a wet noodle, then you know they're dead. Other than that, keep swinging. Like, double tap. This game has a very... You should always double tap. Uh, if the enemy has shields, most of the time, you can kind of just attack them until you plow through it. It's better to attack them than to try... Oop. Okay, he teleported. Where'd he go? I hate these sorcerers. Um, because there's no way... Sometimes when they teleport, it looks like... Oh! See, I almost... Uh, I could have dodged his thing. Um, but I didn't in time. So he's going to pull me close and start eating me. And Kruber's going to... It would have been better to ranged attack him as Kruber. But... So I'm going to pick him up. Oh, another important thing now I think about it. Whenever you're trying to pick someone up uh, from being down... Hold down the block button before you hit E to pick them up. Gosh darn it. Uh, see, this is where it'd be better for me to be on voice chat. So I could tell them, like, hey, I'm being attacked by a sorcerer. Help me. The good news is he only will do a certain amount of damage before he lets you go. Alright, so we managed to push him back. They unfortunately can take quite a bit of damage. Um, yes, we'll take that bomb. Even though the bomb seemed a little bugged right now, which hopefully will get patched. This literally just came out today, this level of the beta, so it's going to have a lot of bugs. Um, but it's it's still... Whoops. Looks like more See? We got the jump on him that time. From using our ears. Bloody rot, bloods. Bloody rat men. So there are some Chaos Warriors over that fence, and I can hear a Gas Rat somewhere. Uh, this is where I would grab a Grimoire, but I'm not going to quite show you guys a Grimoire because this team is really... We're really struggling as is, and a Grimoire reduces, reduces your overall health, which is just rough. Alright, so I shot him, and now he's going to try and suicide, and did I hit him? Ah, see, he blew up on Karelia. Oh, see, I walked through the poison gas, so I kind of took some unnecessary damage, which is rough. So we're going to grab some more ammo, and I'm going to try and see if I can find some healing. Got their shield away from him. See, he fell over, but we keep swinging until he flops. Alright, and the good news is we do get a guaranteed uh, Rat Ogre up ahead. Which is going to be awesome so I can show you guys how to survive a Rat Ogre. Okay, so since I'm in gray health, yeah, that's a time to immediately use a potion. You should always use a potion if your health is in the gray. Which is when the world looks all foggy and you're like, near death. Alright, so... I hear all that yelling... So these are what I call rotters. So you'll notice, I, if I see one coming at me, I'll just block, dodge back, wait until they swing, because that'll cause them to stop moving forward for a bit. And then I'll use whatever my AoE attack is to kill a bunch of them. But mostly I want to fight pretty defensively. So I heard her say, look out, leech incoming, and I know that means the leech sorcerer. Look, the elf tried to prove something. She's butchering more than usual. Gotcha. There's a gutter runner. Uh, they are very, they, they do a roll attack to avoid range attacks. Ooh, Karelian did a really nice job. If you do a block like this, or you dodge like this when the gutter runner runs at you, you can avoid their attack. 
Just like if you see a, gosh darn it, if you see a pack master coming at you, um, you can dodge out of the way of his hook, though it's not the easiest thing. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and unleash the Rat Ogre, and I'll show you guys how to deal with them. So we do that, and here he comes. So the Rat Ogre has that health bar, and what you want to do is you want to focus him with ranged attacks, aiming for the head if you can, but don't worry too much about it. If you can't specifically hit the bed. Like, don't, don't be afraid to use your bombs and, like, everything else. It just... And once you get his aggro, he'll look right at you. And it's important to block. So, he's not on me yet, but I'm going to use a push. Which sometimes will aggro him, sometimes it won't. Yes. So, I'm going to get right on top of him. Okay, so I got his attention. So, I'm going to just block the entire time and just keep dodging backwards. I'm going to press forward when he's not looking at me. And just swing, swing, swing. Stay, stay to his flank. Okay, I'm gonna get my party member up while holding down block. Okay, Karelian blew herself up. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, see, I got up my block just in time, so I'm not taking any damage, despite the fact that he's focusing on me. Okay, so he's on me again, so I'm gonna block and dodge, block and dodge, block and dodge, and just, and then maybe go in for a little attack. Just keep blocking. Go in, block, dodge, and see, I'm managing to avoid most of his damage where like you'll notice when my party members get attacked most of them are getting knocked down but me i took virtually no damage and it's just it's just a matter of learning it's not because i'm like an amazing player or anything it's just because i've played this game enough that i've kind of figured out little ways to survive moments like that all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and push towards the end of this Will level. There are, of course, other fruits. tomes and stuff we could get, but um, if you want to know where like all the tome locations and stuff, there are plenty of videos that you can check out about that. All right, so I'm out of ammo, which is kind of rough, but we'll 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 live. This respite is only So there's there's a poison wind over here, but I have no ammo, so I'm gonna have to take him out the good old-fashioned way, which is I need to run up and bop him in the head. You've looked better, Cruiser. You gotta wait till you're nice and close, and then just smack him around. Uh, I should be able to get her up. She's a little high up there, but. Oh, maybe not. Oh, wait, no, they just walked up. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Alright, and you'll notice I'm just kind of interspersing blocks between my attacks um, just to try and minimize the ability for something to kill me all right so this is a this is a storm burn with a shield they are very durable and you'll notice I'm trying not to let myself get surrounded constantly moving backwards I ah, see I goofed there a little bit yeah see I goofed pretty hard now I went down so hopefully one of my party members will be able to get me up because Oh, I got a storm vermin behind me. Uh, it's not looking so good. We're probably going to fail this mission. But it'll be good enough to demonstrate kind of what I wanted to demonstrate, which is okay with me. So I'm dead. I'm like dead, dead, dead. All right, and everybody's knocked down. And when everyone gets knocked down like that, you lose the mission. Now, what probably doomed our team was that we weren't able to communicate well. And that's because, <laughs> presumably, I was recording a video. So I wasn't able to, like, issue orders or any of that stuff. But that's okay. So, uh, with that, that's pretty much most of the basics. I'll demonstrate one or two little quick things, and then we'll pretty much be done. And then at the end of the mission, of course, you get some experience. And when you level up, you get you unlock a uh, weapon, and you get a free chest every time you level up. And then when you win a mission, um, you'll get to see how that works. It's pretty self-explanatory. Alright, and then it'll kind of give you your end of the game, end of the game stats. So we're going to go ahead and return to keep, and I'm going to show y'all just one or two little quick things left, and then we'll be done. Um, so I hope all of you are getting Vermintide 2. I hope you all have a great time playing it. Um, I'm going to be doing some streams and playing with patrons especially and a bunch of other stuff. Um, it's a super fun game. It's, it's not too hard to learn but incredibly difficult to master, and overall it's just a great time. It is a bit of a rough start at first, uh, just because 
you only start off with like one weapon for each character and like you know like i don't like the ranger that much i much prefer the iron breaker and playing with like a shield an axe and a uh um a flamethrower but you'll kind of learn what weapons suit you best when the time comes so you'll notice now the keep has opened up a lot like all of these passages were blocked by rubble and now they're open so these are the other kind of last things i wanted to show you so this is the equipment system it's pretty straightforward um anytime you are able to see your equipment so like i just unlocked a new axe now uh it kind of tells you uh some attributes about your items in those green so I can see that both my two-handed hammer and great axe cause shield breaking, but the two-handed hammer specializes in wide sweeps and crowd control, which is better for hordes, while the great axe focuses on high damage and armor piercing. So let's kind of try that out for a second and see how different it is. So I'll notice the like the attack 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 are pretty similar, but let's see what happens when I over attack now. So you'll see it's pretty similar. But if we were to go into a battle, you'd notice I'd be hitting way less enemies, but I would be much better against enemy units like Storm Vermin. Uh, and you can, of course, uh, so, like, these are my melee weapons. Then you got your range category. You have necklaces, charms, and trinkets that take up different slots. Talents, you'll unlock these as you level up through the game, and you basically pick one and you can change it at any time, um, and you have to level up with each individual character as well. So, like, now that I'm level 2 with Barden, that does not mean I'm level 2 with anyone else. I'm only level 2 with the Dwarf. All my other characters are still level 1. Crafting, um, <coughs> excuse me. Let's go ahead and open a chest so we can explore crafting. So we're going to the Spoils of War, and I'm going to open up this, uh, yep, open up this chest here. And it's going to give me three items. Alright, so it gave me an axe, a charm, uh, oh, two charms. So then I'm going to close it, and I'm going to go to back to my equipment. And I see I've got an axe that's worth ten power, and that's five higher than my other one. So that means it's it does more damage, and it also increases my hero's power level. And your power level... Uh, as you can see, increases your damage dealt, increase, increases uh, how much it takes uh, for you to get staggered, and also, or maybe it's how well you can stagger others, and then the number of enemies penetrated by attack. So you want to try and get your hero power level as high as humanly possible. It also, you have to have a hero power level of, I think, 120 to play on hard. Or no, I think it's like 80 to play on hard, and then like 120 to play on nightmare but regardless like you have to have a high enough level to be able to play and then we got some new charms um and because none of these have an ability we just want to grab the highest power level and that'll let us look at crafting so crafting um there are a couple there are seven different tabs the first tab is you can use any uh item that you're like not going to use so this is power 17 so i'm never going to equip this so i'm going to go ahead and salvage it All right, and for, for my trouble, I got one scrap. Great. So what can I do with scrap? Well, when I click next, I can see that I can forge an item. So here's a little thing I learned. You'll notice that um, I wasn't able to scrap this or this or these two. And that's because these are the basic forms of these items. Whenever you level up, you unlock a new weapon type. So like when I go to crafting and I go here... I see that all of the things that I have the level 5 version of, I'm able to craft. But you'll notice that that axe I picked up, that power 10 axe that I have equipped, I'm not able to craft one of those, despite the fact that I own one. And that's because I haven't unlocked the recipe by leveling up. You have to unlock the recipe for an item before you can create it. So leveling up is very important, especially if there's a particular item you want to craft. Say you really fall in love with the two-handed hammer, that means you're going to have to level up enough that you unlock the recipe so you, you can then create it. And it'll tell you um, what you need to craft. So right now, it's I'm crafting a random item, and it's going to cost me 10 scrap. But if I were to say try and craft a rune hammer, or a two-handed hammer, I see I would need one salvage weapon part and 10 scrap. Uh, next thing is re-rolling equipment properties. 
Uh, when you get a high enough level and you get some chests from winning missions, you'll start unlocking higher level items like green and blue items. And when you break them down, they'll give you green dust and blue dust. And you can use one of each dust and put uh, like a green item in here and re-roll its properties. So for instance, um, if you had an item that said like plus 18% power against infantry and plus 20 to your stamina and you're like, eh, I don't really like that. So I'm going to go ahead and re-roll it. And essentially that's what it is, is you would get something totally different. Like maybe like plus 18% damage against chaos and plus 9% speed, you know, stuff like that. Uh, this is the exact same thing, um, but it only works on, uh, it's used for legendary items, which are orange. And you'll get those once you're notably higher level. And then you can also upgrade an item. So, like, say uh, I had that, uh, that axe I have equipped, which I can't uh, see. So, if I equip that. So, uh, you'll notice, if I go to, like, here... If I wanted, if I had 20 scrap, I could upgrade my axe and it would go from being a gray item to a green item. Or you could put a green in, you go from green to blue. Or you could blow blue and you go from blue to orange. Uh, extract weapon illusion. This is pretty straightforward. It just gives you the appearance of a weapon. So, like, if you, like, found a, a blue hammer and you just love the way it looked, you could put it here and break it down and it would give you the item's appearance. And then this, of course, allows you to apply it. So you could put, like, the weapon that you're having to use here, but then you could put the the version of it that you think is really badass looking here. And that just about does it. There are, of course, cosmetics, but they haven't been unlocked yet. Um, and uh, there's really nothing else left to explain. Uh, I hope you all really enjoy the game. Uh, I think it's a absolutely phenomenal game. And I hope you all have a great time with it. But that's going to do us for now. Oh, one last thing. If you are playing the Bright Wizard, or you're playing the Iron Breaker and you get a certain kind of weapon, you'll notice that she doesn't have ammo, but she has this bar that's building up on my screen. You see it? So here's the way this works. Whenever you cast a spell, or are charging a spell like I'm currently doing, you'll notice the bar goes up. And you'll notice the, the kind of the screaming sound gets more high pitched and I seem to be basically lighting on fire. So you may be wondering, well, what the hell's going on? So I'll tell you. This bar indicates that I'm overheating. And as I overheat, um, I start to get slower. So you'll notice I'm going to get really slow. S see how drastically my attack speed slowed down? And if the bar gets all the way full, like it just did there. So like see how I'm attacking. I'm remaining pretty consistent. Pretty consistent. But then. Oh look how slow it is. Oh so slow. And then if I max it out. I run around like this. And I can't do anything. And boom. That would be me dying. Uh, you'd basically explode and die. But for some reason the explosion effects aren't working in the game right now. Um, what is my. What is my hero attribute. Avoid damage and not casting spells for 8 seconds. Automatically ventilates overcharge. Okay, so that's that's cool. Um, and if you're over... So so on this one, she gets uh, she gets some bonuses while she's overcharging. And when, when, when it says when you're overcharging, that means you're in this area. Where the bar is orange. And when the bar is orange, she gets a bonus to uh, casting spells. But And if I wait for 8 seconds... If I just wait long enough, she'll automatically dispel it without me having to do anything. See, it's rapidly decreasing um, compared to its normal. Now, a way you can force it to decrease is by holding down the R button. If you hold down the R button, it essentially lets you cool off. However, if you're higher than the gray meter, so like if I'm in the gray and I do it, get in the gray. If I'm in the gray, I can do it no problem. No, no bad things happen. However, if I'm, say, up here in the orange meter and I do it, I'm going to take damage for the amount of time that I hold the R button while I'm over the gray meter. So the best way to fight with the bright wizard is to, like, attack until you're full, or until the gray meter uh, is almost full, and then decharge. So if you're fighting in a horde, go, like, one, two, decharge. 
One, two, decharge. If you can. You don't always have that luxury. But never fill up your bar all the way, because you're going to explode and die. Alright, that pretty much does it for the uh, basic how to survive Vermintide video. If you have any questions, put them down in the comment section. I'll try and answer them, and I hope you guys enjoy the game. Um, that'll pretty much uh, do it for today. Thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you guys around. Bye.